for the channel y'all so as i said in the previous video got a new car uh, i've had it for several months now um been driving the crap out of it uh it's one of my holy grail cars <coughs> uh and when you see it you're gonna be like what really uh but there's a backstory to it i want but I'm not going to talk about that until after I reveal the car. Um, long story short, before I actually bought the Fox body, we were actually we were actually looking for one of, not this exact car, but one like it or similar, and maybe not the same color, uh, but we were looking for that kind of car, and because I grew up on them. Um, I guess I am going to go into the backstory. Yeah, this car, this type of car, is what I learned to work on cars on. Um, it's got a lot of nostalgia to me, and uh, always had good luck, fairly good luck with them. Better luck than I've had with Fox bodies. So, um, more or less, it's kind of like we like, you know, the insurance. Let me clarify the insurance money that we got from the fox body didn't pay for this like i said we've already had this car for several months um it just happened to be it worked out this way that we kind of like the fox body ended up being a zero sum game for us you know like it something i put a, tons of hours into over the last year and a half and now it's like it's you know that time has never happened and we ended up with the car i was originally going to buy so that being said, let's get into it. <sighs> I do love this car. Uh, it, it is nothing. A lot of people will be like, why? But here we go. Yep. Uh, Fiero. Pontiac Fiero. This one happens to be an 88 Pontiac Fiero GT. Um in Talbot yellow it's one of only 241 88 GTs with in Talbot yellow it was a one year only color this is the last year of the Fiero um, it also happens to be of the yellow 88 GTs one of only 47 with the factory leather when you take into the account that it has a manual and the removable sunroof uh, it's one of only about 15 cars like it. So, when I saw this, I was actually looking at another one in Maryland, um, a red one that kind of fell through because we were honestly we're going to buy this red, the, the other one, the red one, when I wrecked the Fox body. And we decided to fix the Fox body. By the time we got around to buying, looking at a Fiero again, that one had sold. But my Facebook marketplace region, I'd already had it set to that region, and this one popped up in New Jersey. So, anyway, um, little back, little, if lot, these are a lot less known cars than Mustangs. So, I'm going to talk about it. Um, it's a mid engine, right? You basically got a front wheel drive in the back. And I mean, this is not the factory color of the intake and valve covers. They were normally like an orange or a red with an orange hue. But I mean, it's just a cool looking motor. Nothing spectacular. Uh, factory was a 2.8 liter V6. This has been bored out and new pistons and whatnot to 2.9. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a cool little motor. Got your baby trunk here that you can fit golf club bags in which is for some reason gm's gm's benchmark for trunk space whatever um has a bunch of after aftermarket shit already sorry stuff done to it uh has some uh these were called fiero store sprint manifolds you can't get those anymore uh but basically the factory exhaust manifolds were very restrictive and so was the crossover between the two uh, it at one point had uh, the, an old school turbo. Someone had taken the turbo and hollowed it out and just made it an exhaust. Um, I imagine either because the turbo 
went bad or because they got tired of the extra heat from the turbo because none of the stuff they had no turbo blanket or heat wrap anyway uh like i said it does have the five speed uh which is way better than the automatics that came in these um makes it a fun car to drive um even though it's not great only got you know from the factory these were only rated at like 140 to 100, 135 to 140 depending on the year these were like 135 but it's really the same throughout all the years uh and like 170 foot pounds of torque nothing to write home about at all i mean just you can get beat by just about everything today um but it's only a 2800 pound car uh very they're actually very safe cars in front and side collisions it was one of the highest rated front and side collision cars ever made until like the late 90s um but yeah so you know you got the you got the you got 120 mile an hour speedometer uh is that, is that gonna focus you know the tack i like i've always loved because that the red line is right up top even though with the stock if the mac exhaust and intake manifold is not ported out which this one's pretty much stock they kind of hit a wall around 4500 5000 um it doesn't really pay to rev past that but it's still cool that it like they put the red the 6000 right up like vertical um you know it's, it's you know it's just a it's a cool car and honestly they get really good gas mileage and you can engine swap the crap out of them which we may very well end up doing um as you see the radiators up front this is a um this is an insert a headliner insert that goes underneath the sunroof i kind of leave it out because i use take the sunroof off all the time this is a little airfoil that clips into the front to so you don't get blasted with air um spare all the all the like you know fluids you know reservoirs are up front radiators up front yeah um it's just a cool car you know put that back in there uh have done some things to it let me uh trying to do this one-handed without screwing it up okay there we go got the old pop-up headlights have up i have upgraded those to led and as you see i actually need to i'll be going into it later because i gotta zip tie the connector out of the way But, yeah, it's a really cool car. Um, has some slotted and cross-drilled rotors. Uh, some, a bu several of the things, uh, bushings have been replaced with urethane already. I've got a lot of stuff coming for it. Um, you know, it's, it's just a cool car. And I enjoy driving it. But maybe doing an engine swap and a transmission swap down the road. Even though it's kind of sacrilegious to do that to one to this car, uh, there is one downside of this car that has come up, and it's starting to burn oil. And I'm thinking it's a valve spring or a valve seal. So, you know, I've been debating for a, while, a couple months now whether or not to rebuild this motor, which I probably definitely won't do. Put in. Uh, a bigger version a bigger newer version of the motor that can still use the heads and intake uh so it still looks stock and then go ahead and get a turbo back in it uh or just do a engine swap which a comp you know engine swap i've always enjoyed was the uh, 3800 supercharged motors out of the grand prix um they it's kind of like a v6 push rod version of a cobra motor you know terminator motor they for what they are they're they're awesome and you can find them every, every anywhere because they're put them in just about every damn every gm front wheel drive car there was 
and they last pretty well so i don't know we're, we're coming you know got some decisions to make in the very near future but i do have some stuff i'm going to be going through this car so yeah um we just this this front end is just cool if i take this down again like i said it all the way down so I, it's just it's a cool you know it's kind of it's got really lean lines and i think we're really ahead of the time and you know it you know i'm not doing a body kit i love i, I to me the the factory body style is is where it's at so i'm probably just gonna you know make it keep it looking stock i might i'm probably you know might lower it a little and uh if we need to for bigger tires go to bigger wheels but i will probably try to find wheels that look similar to the factory wheels because i do like the way they look so yeah um got a fear this is like my eighth or ninth one I've had as many of these as i've had mustangs almost uh yeah it's been a joy already i've already we've already put more miles on it than uh we did on the fox body so yeah that's where i'm gonna be going forward i've still got the cobra still got the lightning got you know stuff to do to enjoying both of we you know we never we're never getting rid of those two uh, the, the, this is this is Bay right here. Okay, uh, she's been with me for everything. It finally, you know, I've never had the motor out of the car, but I had also never separated the engine from the transmission. Now I have. That was about the only stuff I haven't touched on this car, and so she ain't going nowhere. Uh, <laughs> probably rapidly, that car will end up being the same way because I'm gonna be going through a whole bunch of stuff and refreshing everything and basically almost restoring it. Even though the paint is, it, it's good. I'm not worried about the paint. Um, it's just, you know, some of the suspension steering stuff need, you know, typical, you know, old high mileage or higher mileage cars, you know, you need to replace things like ball joints, tie rods and stuff like that. Um, I will get into the backstory on this car in another video and the story of us getting it because that was that was a huge debacle um but that's for another video because this video has already been long enough and i've been rambling on so hope this uh doesn't attract any viewers maybe it'll you know, bring back brings not this video but maybe you know this new content will bring about some new viewers maybe you know uh i can in, keep, inform people of how cool these cars actually were and you know i know that there's a lot of hate on them over the years but i can promise you 90 percent of the hate that comes from these cars is either a unwarranted b not factual or C, the prob if it's a problem, it probably relates to any other GM front wheel drive style car of that era. Because it's a parts bin car for the most part. So, uh, yeah. As always, make sure you like, share, and subscribe if you did like it. And until next time, I'll be back.